welcome to Pipes Around the House. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fit and install a bathroom extractor fan like this. I'll go through some basic wiring diagrams, I'll show you how to connect the electrics to the ceiling rows, and I'll show you how to physically install the fan. In this installation, the fan will be operated by your bathroom light switch. If you want to know how to fit an extractor fan using a separate light switch, please refer to my other video, which I'll be uploading shortly. For a detailed explanation of lighting circuits, please watch my other video, How to Fit a Ceiling Light, Lighting Circuits Explained. So I'm just going to show you a simple diagram I've drawn of a ceiling rose. Your lighting circuit comes from the consumer unit. It runs through a length of 1.5mm twin and earth cable, which is this. It will then go to the first light in the house, and in your ceiling rose, you've got four terminals. You've got your neutral, you've got your loop, you've got your line, and you've got your earth. Then from the loop in, you've got your neutral goes to neutral, your live goes to loop, and your earth goes to earth. You've then got a loop out. This is the cable that goes to the next light in the building. This is exactly the same. The neutral goes to the neutral, the live goes to the loop, and the earth goes to the earth. In order to create the switch live which turns the light on and off, you need another cable from the ceiling rows that goes down to your light switch. So the live goes from the loop around then you length the cable to your light switch and when this switch is turned on the neutral cable is used to provide a live current back to the line. We put a piece of brown tape on this and this indicates that it's a switch live. From here this live current then runs down there to the bulb when the switch is turned on. When the switch is turned off the light goes off and then from here the neutral runs back up to the neutral terminal. Installing an extractor fan, whether it be one with a timer or not, we need to tap into some of these terminals. And for a fan with a timer, we need a switch live, a permanent live, and a neutral. We're going to use the earth and create continuity all the way through to the fan, but the earth isn't actually required on most fans if they are double isolated. So to show you how to tap into the switch live, we're going to look at another diagram. So to show you this, I've just zoomed in a bit, and you can see I've added another length of cable. So in order to make your connection to your extractor fan, you're going to need to get yourself a length of three core and earth cable. And this basically has three sheath cables and one bare cable. The bare one being your earth, then you'll usually have a black cable which you can use for anything. You'll have a brown cable which you use for your permanent live. And you'll have a grey cable which again you can use for anything. Whenever you're using these different colour cables as a live or a neutral, always put a piece of coloured tape over the end to indicate what they are. So on the grey one it's a neutral, so we put a piece of blue tape over the end by all the terminals. If it's brown like this, we put some brown tape around the end to indicate that it's a live terminal. Now before this length of three core and earth cable gets the extractor fan, we need to put in an isolation switch. And this means that the power can be completely isolated if we need to work on the fan. This is a three pole isolation switch, and I'll show you this in my practical demonstration later. From your isolation switch it runs back through the three core and earth cable and on to the extractor fan. So the way we do this is our grey cable, the neutral, goes from the neutral terminal in the ceiling rows. And this makes its way all the way down through the cable and to our isolation switch. The brown live cable goes from the loop and we go from the ceiling rows back down to the isolation switch. The black cable we take from the line, which is our switch live, and again this runs down the cable and all the way to our isolation switch. Now the earth is slightly different. Because the isolation switch doesn't have an earth terminal, because our fan is double insulated, in order to keep earth continuity we use a connector block behind the isolation switch and we just take the earth into the connector block and back out the other side. Then on the other side of the isolation switch we do exactly the same as what we do on this side. So if you put your neutral there, you bring your neutral out by there. If your live goes there, the live comes out by here and so on. We then take the three core and earth cable out of the switch, all the way up through the ceiling and back down to the extractor fan. When it gets the extractor fan, if you've got one with a timer, you should have a terminal inside which will be labelled T, and the switch live, or black cable in this case, will go into the T. Again, use the brown tape to indicate that it's a switch live. Your permanent live, the brown cable, will run down and go into the L, and the neutral, which is our grey cable marked up with the blue tape, will go down and into the neutral. The earth terminal, we can just terminate inside and fold it over inside a piece of earth sheath, or you can just terminate it into a connector block. 
This means if you need the Earth in the future where the fan is now located, you know you've got Earth continuity all the way back to the consumer unit and this provides a safe Earth connection. If you're using a fan without a timer overrun, then you're only going to need a neutral and a switch live. So there's no need for the third cable, so you could potentially use the two core and Earth cable. If you wanted to future proof it, you could always use the three core and Earth cable like this and safely terminate each end of the cable you're not using in a connector block. But the principle of using the switch live and going through the isolation switch all the way through to your fan is exactly the same. Right, let's go and have a look at the practical demonstration. So here I'm going to show you two examples using a traditional ceiling rose and using a more modern Wago 222 connector block. And if you want more specific detail on how to wire a lighting circuit, please watch my other video, How to Fit a Ceiling Light Lighting Circuits Explained, and I'll put a web link below in the details section. And there should also be a link pop up on the screen now. So first up I'm going to show you this on a basic traditional ceiling rose. So I've labelled the cables just like in the diagram. We've got the loop in, we've got the loop out, and we've got our switch. And then we've got our three core and earth cable that goes to the fan. And you can see there what I mean. You've, you've got your three cables there with the sheath, and then you've got your bare cable, which you cover with the earth sleeve. And you can see this cable is slightly wider than the standard two core and earth. So if I just move the pendant out the way, you can see we've got the neutral, the loop, the line, and then the earth terminal is by there. So using your three core and earth cable here, it's as simple as taking your grey cable from the neutral and put your blue tape around it to indicate that it's a neutral. Take your brown cable, which is the permanent live, from the loop. Then your black cable we're going to use as the switch live. So take that from this terminal, which again is the switch live, and we've covered it in brown tape to show that it's live. And then we've got the earth, which we've taken to the earth terminal by there. This makes its way from the ceiling rows, through the ceiling, and down to your isolation switch. Now here's another example of a ceiling rose arrangement, but just using connector blocks. So as you can see, you've got your earth connector, you've got your loop, you've got your neutral, and there's your switch live. So it's exactly the same setup as what we just saw. So if this is what you found in your ceiling, now you would just take your three core and earth cable, and I've labelled that up there with an arrow to show that's going to the extractor fan. The black cable is going to be the switch live, so I need it to go into this terminal. To do that, the black cable goes into the terminal, and I lock that off like that, and that's that connected. We then take the live, and we push that into the loop. And that goes, and that's now connected to the loop. We take the grey neutral cable, And we place that into the connector block like that. And then finally we have the earth. We just place the earth into the earth connector block like that. And that's it. It's that simple. Don't forget to put your piece of blue tape over your grey cable and your brown tape over your black cable. And this cable again will go on down to your isolation switch. And if you're using connector blocks like this, they can be safely isolated in the ceiling using the Wago box junction box. And I explain this in my other video how to fit a ceiling light and in my Wago 222 connector block review. So there's the 3 pole 10 amp fan isolation switch and that is located above the door. And the reason for this is safety. If you were to isolate that switch and go and work on the extractor fan it's not in an easy location for somebody to switch on and off by accident. If this was located down with your light switch outside the door, it is likely that somebody may by accident turn the power back on when you are working on the extractor fan, making the cables live. So I'll quickly undo the switch and show you how the wiring behind it works. Now this is as simple as you've got three inputs into the top of the fan, and then you've got three outputs at the bottom. So the three core and earth cable we just saw coming out of our ceiling rows, in my example I just showed you, would be this cable here. So we've got the grey, which we've marked with blue tape, which is the neutral. We've got our brown, which is the permanent live. We've got our black, which we've wrapped the brown tape around, which indicates it is our switch live. And we've got an earth. And we've got exactly the same on the other side. So the way this works is these are marked L1, L2 and L3. And again, L1, L2, L3. So just match the colours with the corresponding letter and number. So the black cable on the top goes into L1 and it goes into L1 on the bottom as well. The brown L2 and L2 
and the neutral, which is the grey, L3 and L3. It's that simple. We've also got the earth cable, which doesn't go through the isolation switch. So it's all you do here is connect the two earth cables together, which I've done in a little connector block and wrapped in earth tape. You could use, for example, a Wago 222 connector or anything like that for that. This provides continuity along the earth cable all the way from the ceiling rows right the way to the fan. So quite simply, this three core and earth cable then comes out of this switch. It goes up into the ceiling, makes its way back down to the extractor fan. And we'll see this in a minute in my practical demonstration. Simply screw the switch back into the Patras box or your metal back box. This is then left in the on position. That way the fan will be operated with the light switch. Outside my bathroom I got the standard light switch and with the three pole fan isolating switch turned on, when I turn this switch on, that will turn the fan on inside the bathroom. When you turn this switch off again, the fan will run for about 30 minutes on the timer and then will turn itself off. The fan I'm using today is the XBEL Air Simply Silent DX100. This fan's got a timer, which means that it'll run on when you turn off the light switch. So taking a closer look at the fan, this fan's got a kind of recess. So when you put it to the wall, it leaves a, a, about a 10 mil shadow gap. So the wall will actually be by there. And if we take it apart, it's got a couple of clips, which you need to unclip, take the cover off, and then inside you've got that. Now in order to get your cable from the wall into the fan, it's got this hole. So before connecting the fan, you need to make sure that you've got a hole in the wall and you've also got a feed for the cable. If you're putting this in a modern house with a partition wall and a gap, this is easy because you can put it into the plasterboard and you've got a hollow behind to apply your cables. If like mine it's a solid brick wall, you're going to need to cut out a hole using a diamond core drill bit and that'll create your hole. But then you're also going to need to run your cable down the wall to come out by here for your fan. So with a solid brick wall, you may have to chase your wall, put in a little bit of trunking, and then have your cable so you can push it up and down inside the wall, then where it pops out, you can bring it through the hole, and then you can connect it up where you need to. Basically, you can get humidity settings on them, you can get timer run-on settings, and some of the fans have a high and low speed setting. So you just have to look in your instructions, see which model you've got, and try and make head or tail of it. This one is just a timer, so you can adjust the timer settings. Just by there, there's a little blue circle, and you can turn it left or right, and basically adjust the timer to overrun. So when you turn your light switch off and the fan is turned off, it will keep running on for whatever time you set it to, and the maximum on this is 30 minutes after you turn the switch off. I find they're always best to leave it on that, because if you've had a shower or something like that, you want to leave it on as long as possible, and they don't cost much to run anyway. It gets rid of all the moisture. This is a 110 mil hole. I cut this out with a diamond core drill bit, so you have to use that on a drill and slowly rotate it until you get through the wall. Unless, of course, you've got a plasterboard wall with a gap in it, in which case it's easy. This was a bit more hassle because it's older solid red brick. For this setup, I brought my cable from the, through the top. Really, you should line your cable up with the hole provided in this. I didn't. I put it in before I bought the fan, which is a bit of a dodgy thing to do sometimes. But it's okay, because my hole is slightly bigger than I needed, so my cable could just run inside, down the side and in. If you're doing it yourself, I recommend getting the fan first and then do the hole and work out where your cable goes. Now you can see you can move this cable up and down because I put a piece of conduit up into the ceiling and when I plastered it, I plastered it over the top. Right, so the first thing we need to do when we're physically fixing this to the wall, use your level line which is on the fan there and it shows you that's the right way up. Right, so I'm going to pull my cable through there, I'm going to line this up roughly where I need it and I'm going to mark my drill holes. And where I cut my hole, it is a little bit rough around the edges, so I'm going to have to go around it with a little bit of decorator's cork or a little bit of sealant. But when I put the cap over the top, it'll be finished off nicely. Right, so using your level line and making sure it's upright. And then you just need to mark in the holes provided. And then we can drill some holes, put some plugs in there, and then screws into the plugs. So using your masonry drill bit, I've used 5mm drill bits and then I've used the appropriate plug to put into that. You can use 6mm or whatever you want really, but you don't need one too big for something as small. This telescopic duct came with the extractor fan. It's no good for my wall because my cavity is too big and it doesn't fit. 
but it's very useful. You can put one inside the other and you can just move it to the width of the wall. Because my wall's too thick, I'm just going to use a length of soil pipe. I'm going to fit it in, I'm going to cut it to length. It's exactly the same diameter, 100 mil, so this should do the trick. I've used it before on another extractor fan, it works absolutely fine. Well, I'm going to go outside now and just do a few measurements, and we're going to make sure that this duct runs flush with this wall and flush with the grill on the outside wall. Alright, so I've got my pipe lined up outside, flush with the wall and my outside vent. So I'm just going to mark around here with a pencil and I'm going to cut this flush here as well. I'm going to cut the pipe with a standard handsaw. I've cut my piece of pipe which I'm going to put through there and use for my vent. Right, so I'm going to put a little dollop of grip fill on the back of my extractor fan because my holes aren't the best. One of them's a little bit loose. This isn't great practice, but to be honest with you, there's nothing wrong with it. It'll just help firm it up to the wall so there's no movement. So there we are. I put a little blob by each screw hole. Then we need to offer the extractor fan into the duct. Make sure you put it up the right way using the level line marked on the extractor fan. Right, so we've got that secured, fitted to the wall. I'm going to wire it up now. I'm going to start with stripping the cable using my CK wire strippers. I've reviewed these in another video, so you can go and watch the review and see what you think you want to buy a pair. They're about 15 quid and they're brilliant. I'll put that on there. Strip. And I've got my strip bit of cable there. So I just snip it using my tin snips. So I've got a rough length there from the edge of my grey sheath and what I'm taking off should take me just nicely up to my connector block. Using my CK wire strippers, I'm going to take a little bit off each cable. Now in this installation, there's no requirement for an earth on the extractor fan because it's plastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my earth sheath over it. I'm just going to fold it back on itself, out the way. So I'm just going to put a little bit of blue tape around my grey cable, which is the neutral. And then we always put a bit of brown tape around any switch live. I have got earth continuity all the way to my switch with the cables. I've connected them all the way up, so I know that if this needed to be earthed, it would work. Now where I've got my conduit, you can push the cable back in to get rid of your grey sheath. And I can now connect these up. I'm just going to take a little bit of copper off the top of these because they're a little bit long for the connector block. You will need an electrical screwdriver a bit like this with a very fine tip. Some of these small connections here physically won't fit a screwdriver head in unless you've got a little fine one like that. Okay, I just want to show you the setup. Here's your connector block. Beneath this connector block, it's got the letters L for live, N for neutral, and T for timer. And the way you do this is you connect your permanent live into the live, which is the L. You connect the neutral into the N, which is neutral. And you connect your switch live into the letter T, which is for your timer. And that's what this allows is your light switch goes on, it turns the fan on. When you turn it off again, the fan keeps running for the length of the timer. Up here, this adjusts the length of the time that the fan carries on for. Turning clockwise is longer, turning anti-clockwise is shorter. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of sealant around the edge of that, and then when my cover goes on, you'll never see it. My earth, I've just pulled down this way, out of the way, and that'll just sit loose underneath the casing in case you ever need it in the future. And as I said before, it provides the continuity. And then there's a little hole, and because I drilled my hole a little bit bigger, my cable goes in and just wraps around the outside of the tube and up through my conduit. In an ideal world, you would put your conduit straight up the wall to your ceiling, or it'd be coming through if you had plasterboard with a gap behind it, which makes it a lot easier, to be honest. This house is a bloody nuisance. Right, if I turn the light on, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it started spinning. If I turn the light off, and there you go. It's on overrun now on the timer, so that's perfect. So it all seems to be working. One last thing left to do, and that's just to clip the cover on. 
Tidy darts. Right, just to show you my hole, you can see the inside of the extractor fan in there. This is the hole I did with my diamond core drill bit. I've cut this pipe flush with the outside wall, and then I've got a hole there and a hole there that I drill just with a 6mm drill bit, and I put plugs in there. Now I'm going to screw the cover on. just put a bit of sealant across the top of there, down the sides and leave the bottom so that any water that gets in can drain out. And there you have it, finished job, extractor fan complete. For more DIY, how-to, household tips and product review, please watch my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. I've been Pouse Around the House. Ta-ta, farewell.